Love Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gypsy Poet Radio. <laughs> I, of course, am the Gypsy Poet, and with me is the lovely and talented and sparkling and absolutely hilarious girl, George. Yes, people say it with me, girl, George, girl, George, girl, George. Oh, what a blast. <laughs> we got Kevin Henderson from the Swings, and he also does work for one of my favorite bands in the world, Fish Karma. we got to welcome this guy. Hello, everybody with me? Oh, yeah. Thank you for, this is Kevin. Thank you so much for having me, as they say on the radio, so to speak. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> hey, uh, girl, George. How you doing? I, I love that mm-hmm. video you guys get up on, on YouTube with you guys singing out on the porch, you and Fish Karma doing that America song. Oh, I'm I'm glad you got to see it, and I'll tell you, it's funny. Funny you should bring that up because uh, yeah, I'm call, you know talking to you from Armory Park, and that was shot at my house uh, on the bare bones budget uh, with three ancient uh, video cameras, including a VHS C, I believe is it's called VHS C, some format I've never seen before. Done on the cheap, edited in a day, and I think it's everything a rock video should be. Oh, it's great. Uh, I love it. I love it. It's mm-hmm. clear. You can hear the words, and you guys got the intensity. Are, are you lip syncing? <laughs> oh, of course. Of I didn't course. see any uh, chords plugged in. <laughs> no. But you got no, it right people like money you know, know to look for real. the chords. Yes. Uh, no, we played it over my stereo really loud. Um, and and I, one of the cool things about living in Tucson is... I know all my neighbors, so they're, they're, they're cool with it. I mean, I lived in L.A. for nine months. I lived in San Francisco for, for six years, and I didn't know any of my neighbors very well at all. But, uh, no, they were cool with it, and, yeah, that is, that is my front porch. So, uh, yeah, it uh, sounds yeah, we're good, happy with it. it. It looks good. You should do Swap Meet Women. I don't know why he don't want to do that song, just because it's male chauvinistic pig. Kinky Freeman does Get Your Biscuits in the Oven and Your Bones in the Bed. <laughs> Well, so well me women, women. See, Fish Karma, Fish Karma, and mm-hmm. I, if I may rant for a minute, uh, they, yeah. it's an interesting history because I started playing uh, on on a stage in in punk bands when I was fifteen, and uh, in Tucson. And there's a shot that Fish has put on his his web page, his, fa- his Facebook page, of mm-hmm. him on stage at Tequila Mockingbird. And there is another shot going around the the net of me at age 15 on stage with my brother's band, What Went Wrong. And um, we were underage. Uh, and I have occasionally had musicians that I've had to recently sneak into uh, clubs where they're serving booze and stuff. But back in those days, that no one really seemed to care that they're you know we were 15, we were playing punk shows. It was it was uh, it was before the the great sullenness spread over the land, and things were just a little more laid back then. And, uh, Girl George, I'm, I'm assuming that now you were sort of in the, in the uh, maybe not the punk scene, but you, you met Fish in, in L.A., do, a stand-up kind of thing, or, or what? It's a punk club. Yeah. Out yeah. for No Talent Night, where they threw cups at you if they didn't like you. Yeah. Yeah, and we both well, played there all the time. We were friends. We played a lot of gigs together. He did my I had love ins and he played my love ins and, and and we went to a wake together. <laughs> yeah, I love I, Fish Carver. I think he's the most amazing act I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, well, it, and anyway, so when I was sixteen or something, I heard they used to have back before radio was all clear channeled out. They would have, like, the punk show on the rock station late at night. And I remember hearing Swap Meet Women, you know, uh, <laughs> when I was 15 or 16, and I laughed my ass off. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, and then, like, I didn't really think of him for, for 30 years, and it's really interesting that, uh, you know, I moved to California, I came back, and uh, that that we started working together was kind of an interesting story in itself that uh, kind of ties into the swigs and other things, too. But uh, it's been really now, fun. How did you get together? How did you get together? Well, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the, big, the big event that crystallized a bunch of stuff was I, uh, Al Perry, who is kind of a, a local legend here, who um, it, it, people throw around words like, bandy around, I should say, uh, words like the godfather of the punk scene and stuff, but 
Al is sort of he's not he's not only that he's a he's a historian of Arizona music and like if there's some band that was as good as Funkadelic from Phoenix in 1972 he's going to play it on his radio show and he has a radio show on uh, Tuesday nights at KXCI dot uh, org every week uh, I think it's Tuesday nights but anyway we did this golf uh, Al Perry and I sort of organized this golf uh, disaster benefit called Spillapalooza, and um, that's really where, like, this lineup of the Swigs kind of crystallized, and that's where I met all the Fish Karma guys, and th- we had this wonderful club called the Red Room that uh, it, it, it burned down and uh, mysteriously, and no one really said anything because we, we really still are kind of Wild West out here. But the Red Room was a place where all the musicians would hang out, and any band could play. Any band could play there once, but a lot of people played there. And I just sort of ended up uh, making friends with them, and uh, they started asking me to sit in on like if the bass player could, player could make it, uh, kind of gigs. And then, um, but Fish Karma gave me this di- two discs. It was a very kind thing of him to do, uh, of, of kind of his life work. And uh, I realized that between Swap Meet Women and Halloween in America, there was all this stuff. <laughs> uh, and eventually they asked me to join the band, um, and mainly because of what they'd seen with the Swigs. Uh, uh, but I never thought I would write with him. And, and it's really interesting because I don't know if you've heard the rest of the Lethal Fairy Tales album other than America, yeah. American, but... Uh, we we wrote that uh, most of that stuff around my kitchen table, um, really old school, um, and I've never had that kind of <laughs> relationship uh, writing with a, with another musician quite like that before. So it, it was just it just sort of happened. It was- well, lots of fish karma. The bands he played with in L.A. they they kind of overpowered him and took it somewhere else. And he was always well, he better by himself, him. where you could hear what he was doing. But with right. you, it worked. Mm-hmm. It works. Your your music enhances and actually takes it to a higher level. You're, well, you're very good on guitar, and, and you you add a lot to fish, and you can still hear every fucking word and nuance that he. Yeah, you know, and and the thing is, his lyrics are so. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how he sings them. I've got actually on my wall right now. I have uh, there's a new song we're working on called "The Northwest Passage," and it's a it's a it's it's a, a humorous look at. Uh, opening up the Northwest Passage to Arctic oil drilling, which see, this is his, this is his genius. His genius is that he can make the most depressing shit funny, and uh, that that is a very very rare quality. But anyway, this reads: the Northwest Passage calls to all who seek her bounteous offshore favors. The grand game with modified rules, but most of the traditional players, and it's like. He has to sing this stuff, and and one of the reasons I I do so many backing vocals is to give him a break because his lyrics are <laughs> dense, man. Yes. They are dense. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, I, yes. I don't know how I, he does it. Days are a day yeah. apart, you know. I'm sorry. Our birthdays are a day apart. He's a oh, Scorpio really? like me. I'm two days before Halloween. He's one day before Halloween. We just have our birthday party together at Al's Bar. Yeah, we actually just celebrated his birthday at um, Toxic Ranch Records, which is one of the old punk record stores that uh, sadly is uh, going out of business for, for very various reasons. But it, it's a really interesting place. You You walk in there. And and half of it is just frozen in like 1983 or something. They still have the T-shirts. They still have the 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 Black Flag records. You know, I mean, they still have everything. And Zines, Maximum Rock and Roll. I mean, um, which which was sort of the Bible uh, back in the day. But we did it. We recently did a set there. Um, uh, just uh, we're we're kind of reforming the band after a, a, a bit of a break. But. Um, yeah, I love the record we did together, Lethal Fairy Tales, and and that an American too. I don't I don't think that's breathed its final breath yet. You know, um, that thing has some legs. I, I I love the lyric and I love the riff and the riff 
hey, I'll cop to it. Uh, you know, I I did rip off Tie Your Mother Down by Queen a tiny bit on, on one of the things. <laughs> and I thought it was a throwaway. I mean, I thought it was just like going to be just a throwaway song and the lyrics great, but I it, but it, it, it really works. And there's some other songs on there I, I really love. I don't know if you've heard, but... Um, Occupied is, uh, yes. is is his take on the Occupy movement, mm-hmm. and it, it is it's not it's not bitchy, it's not preachy, mm-hmm. it's sort of melancholy, mm-hmm. but it has almost like the logic of a children's song. There's no verse and chorus; it it just sort of does this thing like a round almost, and and it and it comes it comes back and forth, and and we, we we recorded that just me and him, me on the guitar. And him on the vocals. I think we recorded it the night we wrote it. So, mm-hmm. anyway, the Lethal Fairy Tales album is, is 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 something really special, and it kind of, for various reasons, it was it was sort of buried uh, at the time of its release. But it it, it will rise again if I, if I have any say in the matter. Your videos, like you did on, on your porch, and put them up on YouTube. That way, that way, a lot of people that that have never heard of you will find you. Yeah, you know, that's so true. Um, with the Swigs also, like, the, one of the things with the Swigs is that it's a very different kind of band in that it really our live shows, we improvise so damn much. I don't know if you got a chance to listen to the, the track I sent you, uh, but that, that was from two nights ago, and it was just one of the, the band was just on fire. And with those, with, with the Swigs, we're a trio and mm-hmm. we're really working off off telepathy. I swear to God, it, it's no joke. When you have when you have musicians of a certain uh, level of ability, and you know them so well, and you know their little tricks, and you know their the, what games you're playing and stuff, and you you can hear on on uh, the track I sent you, "Let It Come Down." The drummer and I are, are at first are riffing off each other, and I know what he's going to do. It's it's telepathy, and the ba- and then Eric, the bass player. Is, is 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 cued in on as, as well, but when it, with the swigs, I often just record live um, because the, the live set is so changing and um, interesting, and uh, th- that's what I I love about live performance. You know, I was thinking about this today that when we talk about magic. Um, mm-hmm. Magic is exactly what we say it is. It's nothing uh, particularly strange. It's like you know, you say, uh, well, you know, I, I had a magic shag this morning. I uh, the magic night, uh, magic gig. That's exactly what it is. And when you get um, improvisation uh, that that works, and and you have an audience that cu- that is cued into it. That's when it's really like playing music for me. And with with fish and and and, and me, it's like. Uh, we have our own little interactions that we do. You can see it in the video a bit, but um, so right there, you did really good on that porch. It was it, it, you mm-hmm. captured fish, the fish that I know. You captured him, mm-hmm. and I want you to do it more because I want I want his old stuff that he doesn't want to do anymore, like the one about uh, when he his, his girlfriend done left him for dead, and and he gets a paper cut and everything, and then she comes back and she just went out for a cigarette or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll never I, forget. I'll, I'll never forget the, uh, the first time I saw them at the at the Boondocks Lounge, which is aptly named. It's in a Boondocks Boonies part of Tucson, and uh, he made this joke about this country punk. He's like, I've, I'm not. I'm no longer receiving royalties on the country punk's cassette. And this is this obscure, obscure. Like if you if you weren't around in '82 or '3, you wouldn't know about it. And he was just. Then he did Tore Up From the Floor Up, which is a hilarious uh, lyric. And really, for me, Halloween in America was the one that um, really blew my mind uh, and made me say, yeah, I want to work with these guys. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with that song, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I think uh, La Poetessa Gitane is. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, yes, I am. Halloween yes, in America. I, I, yes. I have heard this and he song. Sort, and he sort of I, cobbled together a video mm-hmm. just uh, by hand, as it were, uh, you know, with little yeah. photos and stuff. But uh, so anyway, I, I, I tend to think uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy working in um, both of these bands. And like I said, since uh, the Gulf Spill thing, uh, the Gulf mm-hmm. Spill benefit, which, uh, g- good Lord, you guys, uh, that that typhoon that just hit the Philippines, Oh yeah, my God! Had hit Japan. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like uh, sashimi, uh, radioactive sashimi down our, our our throats right away, whether we like well, it or not. Well, the radiation has already hit here, you know. It's already coming oh, across yeah. the ocean, and it's here in our water and our fish. Oh, we're all yeah. going to die. Oh, well. <laughs> Yeah, well, and and I I actually think like if you if you try to follow current events, I mean it's just mm-hmm. the, it, it's not only just like Mount Everest's of stupidity, okay, but it's it's also crazy, and there's so much to keep up with that to me like when I go to a rehearsal or a or a gig, um, mm-hmm. that is an opportunity to sort of free myself and f- hopefully free other people from just the strain of, of living in the modern world and um, get, get to have some fun, you know, um, mm-hmm. uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And I, I think it's very healing to people. I, I really do. Yeah. So I think it's uh, – I, I feel very secure in my mission these days, <laughs> as crazy as things get. Yeah. Um, I actually wrote a review for Punk Globe um, on Lethal Fairy Tales, and uh, I one thing I did notice in the in, in the Lethal Fairy Tales album is that you're you're right about this is that the words are very dense and and but you pack a lot of material in a short amount of time, and that's something I really enjoyed about listening to that album and every everything yeah. you do does that everything that you do does that it's like you pack so much in such a short amount of time and it's and and it's understandable and i love that i really I do think it's the only way to go i i mm-hmm. think it's the only way to go um like for example okay when i say the swigs improvise we improvise but we are not a jam band we are a song based yeah. band it's tight it's mm-hmm. very tight but we have fun with it and with with the Fish Karma record, like for example, um, one of my favorite tracks on there is the last one, Chavez Goy, which um, mm-hmm. uh, that that whole outro on the Echoplex is me, and 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 he he let me do it. It, it was it was kind of audacious, you know. It's like opening mm-hmm. this cosmic vortex in the middle of this song, but we still kept it short and sweet. Make your point, you know, mm-hmm. um, because not not really. Because attention spans are are lower, which they are, but I really think uh, we are doing pop music, even if it rocks. It, 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 it rocks really hard. Um, mm-hmm. you, you want you don't want to waste people's time, and uh, mm-hmm. there is something called songwriting craft that used to exist that I still <laughs> practice, and 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 Fish yeah. still practices, and. Um, uh, oh my God, you guys! I, I, modern music these days. I was thinking about this uh, the other day because mm-hmm. it, it, you may not believe this, but there are actually times when I have to go to a shopping mall, like once a year, whether it's for mm-hmm. for family or an emergency for friends or whatever. But you mm-hmm. go into these places, and it's almost like there's a there's a mainstream music industry that is now completely divorced from anything mm-hmm. that's going on on the streets or in anybody's life, and it's all mm-hmm. auto tuned to death. It's all <laughs> lip synced, and that just kind of has nothing to do with what we do, you know. Um, yes. it's, it's amazing how out of touch. Uh, I, I I don't know. I call it kid music, but I can't believe. I mean, <laughs> auto tune to me is just like you know the kiss of death or something. <laughs> I have to agree with you there, but you you got on the soapbox. I'm not going to take that spot from you. <laughs> well, I'd be I'd be happy to go on. I mean, I'll tell you what it sounds like. It it, it sounds like a cheesy synthesizer note played beneath the uh, the vocal in question. And mm-hmm. um, I mean, it's just you know, I, I saw this thing on uh, Russia Russia Today, which is the the Russian language channel. It's really excellent. They they were saying mm-hmm. Elton John is the last uh, the last big star that uh, mm-hmm. still sings his own stuff, but the rest of them all lip sync and stuff. And I actually heard from uh, friends of mine that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, even bands like U2, they have like a, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, this is just hearsay. This this may or may not mm-hmm. be true. I, I don't know personally. Right. But, you know, they have the whole thing pro tools out, and it's just, I, I've never, I mean, I can't imagine working that way. I mean, you guys perform, can you? I mean, uh, why even bother performing live? If, if if you just yeah. know what you're going to get, I mean, to me, it's the excitement of the 
that you're taking a risk or many risks. You know, the and good thing about it is that technology has went around where if yeah. you learn how to do it, you can do it yourself. The artists don't have to have a fucking record company, and they don't have to kiss up no bastard that's going to change what they do and, yep. and milk toast it down. You can do it your fucking self. You can put it on the web yourself. You can put it out there yourself. You just got to learn how to do it yourself. Right, right. And use this you know, new medium um, and fuck what they're putting out because nobody's buying it anyway. Right, and the only thing that sells, I will tell you this, at, at Squig Shows, at Fish Karma sells, we sell the Fish Karma Al Perry American single on red vinyl, uh, available from me, uh, details to come later, uh, and we sell the, the, the Squig's Johnson Family Values on vinyl, and the vinyl it's like it doesn't sell a huge amount, but it consistently sells. And there's this whole younger generation that actually is intrigued by vinyl. Uh, and, yeah. they, and they like to, you know, hold it in their hand. They like to put it on and, and sit down and listen to it. And I would rather have a minority of people who are into vinyl buying it than just be in the iPod shuffle forever. So that stuff does, you know, the vinyl does sell slowly but surely. But um, the last couple of years, I'll tell you, the CD sales have just, you know, dropped off the, you know, the the edge of the flat earth or something. I mean, it's just it's just non-existent. Because the whole technology has tra- changed. You've got to learn to master it. You've got to put that shit up on YouTube, put the old stuff up that he don't want to put out again or has already been out, you know, like a swap meat woman. Put it up on the porch there. Do it like that, put it on YouTube, and then the kids will find that and say, oh, I want to see what that guy is doing because he yeah. is brilliant. He's a genius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you've got to yeah. put it there so where you can find it. You, you hide it away and say, oh, you got to buy it for me before you hear it. Nobody will ever hear it. you got to put no, it there. Well, that so that is it. not my trip. There may be some other people's trip. I, I, I am uh, – YouTube is really – I'll tell you, more people have seen – the Swigs and Fish Karma on YouTube than, mm-hmm. you know, have ever bought a record. And, and once and they see how brilliant he is, they, they will come and find the rest of you. They will come and look for everything you did because he's brilliant. If if you got mm-hmm. shit and you put it up there, they're going to say, oh, that's shit. But he's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, well, even if you have shit, you, you might uh, get mm-hmm. a runaway hit from something being so awful that uh, people think it's funny. <laughs> yeah. That, that happens, happens all the like time. <laughs> That happens all the time. That 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 whole uh, I don't know where they slow down people's guitar solos and make them look uh, ridiculous and all that. But anyway, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm totally uh, d- doing all of that. And actually, with with the Lethal Fairy Tales record, I produced it myself. I produced the video myself. I printed the vi- the vinyl. Yeah, again, kind of like you said, cut out the middleman. You just go straight to the the pressing plant. And deal with them, and it's cheaper. You you do the you do the artwork uh, through someone else, and it's cheaper. So I, uh, compared to the 1990s or something like that, this is a this is a, a wonderful time to be a musician. And the other thing is, we have really complete uh, artistic freedom. We don't really have to explain it. Uh, what we're doing or what it is or what the label they want to put, uh, you know, is it grunge, is it alternative, is it this, that, or the other. Uh, we don't, <laughs> we never think of that stuff, and that's a luxury that uh, people 20 years ago didn't have. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, yep, yep. You just got to learn the I, media. You got to learn learn the new, you know, the new tools is Facebook and, and YouTube. <laughs> It's free. I want to come back. To, I want to come back to Kevin here. I want to know um, a little bit more about you. Where are you from originally, and what what possessed you to grab the guitar? Oh God! You know, um, I'm nominally a Connecticut Yankee, but I only spent three years, which uh, uh, will only be the the only three years I ever spent uh, spent in Connecticut, probably. Um, but uh, my my dad got a job teaching out here at the at U of A, and uh, the the person that inspired me to grab a guitar was my guitar teacher, this 19-year-old genius named Eric Leifheit, and he has built uh, three or four of my guitars, one of which you can see in the American video. And uh, he showed me the bar chords, and, and my brother, too, which, by the way, just to freak you guys out even more, I actually am a twin, which is, uh, uh, but, but, 
but um, as Jerry Garcia would say, uh, he don't look like me. Uh, he, he may be my twin, but um, we're very different people. But um, he's more like a brother. But we learned together as kids, and that's really cool when you have a brother. You sort of spur each other on and stuff. And so anyway, I was taught the bar chord and uh, the Eric Clapton, uh, you know, uh, just simple blues scale. And then once you have that, you're kind of off to the races. Uh, and, uh, you know, learning on, on the, you know, as a kid in the 70s, a uh, teenager in the 80s, uh, the 90s, the 20s, I'd rather forget about. And, the, you know, it's kind of been upward and onward from there. But uh, what possessed me? I, oh, my God, it was the only game in town. It, it, and uh, I, still, I still have the same passion and enthusiasm for guitars and, and playing guitar that I always did. And, I, you know, back in the 70s, it was almost like the iPhones are today. It was this magical technology, the electric guitar, you know. And now maybe that's worn off for some people, but I, I still love it. And uh, so, yeah, it was the only, only game in town, and it, it was and remains uh, very fun. <laughs> awesome. I like that. Oh, Do you, so play, you play piano? <laughs> Is that the deal, or...? Yes, that's me. I do. I do. I play the 88s. I've been playing since I was in diapers. <laughs> well, they used um, to start us all off on piano. You know, parents would do mm-hmm. this. That we're going. We're going yeah. to give the kids some culture. And yeah. I took piano lessons too. But but uh, mm-hmm. the, you know, the electric guitar, the piano was no match for the electric guitar. It it, it just in oh. terms of there, there's something. Uh, the, the the power that you can get out of a relatively uh, uh, small setup is uh, is quite wonderful and uh, yeah I still I'm I'm still like a little kid with all that stuff I still love it and uh, there's something to be said for playing I mean oh my God it's more than thirty years now you know so <laughs> and, and it's not it's not uh, it's not you know you you get technical ability and that's mm-hmm. cool. Uh, that enables you to do certain things. But if you really want to improvise and play and play something that you think is beautiful, it's almost like you collect all that technique and you practice and all that stuff, and then it's like jumping off a cliff and you throw all that away, and it's back mm-hmm. to, um, you know, playing. I, I love this verb, to play music. It's, it's like the yeah. same... Uh, Jouer in French, spielen in, in German. It's like kids playing. And so it's almost like you get all that technique uh, in order to be able to say something, but then you've got to abandon it and not think of technique anymore. So yes. I, 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 I love that part of improvisation. Yes. Oh, it, it is a it is a fun thing. I mean, um, I've um, I only gained the structure of the whole thing since I was a little kid, and after that, I just kind of ran with it myself. So um, the piano well, that's for me how you is like writing. Like, yes. Right. I mean. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, you start yes. writing by arranging little things, and that sounds good to you, and and yes. you keep doing it, and then it, it is you know the the vocabulary. Um, Mm-hmm. The, the whole thing of like it's like having a vocabulary in a language. That's true, but in order yeah. to like move people with it, you can't mm-hmm. be just thinking of technique because then you you get sort of the yeah. the Ingve Malmsteen kind of syndrome where they can run <laughs> run up and down the fretboard real easily, but uh, they can't. Yeah. Uh, you know, Eric Satie is 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 very interesting mm-hmm. in this regard. If you're into piano, because mm-hmm. it's this really simple minimalistic mm-hmm. stuff. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's, but it's like heart wrenching, you know. Oh God, yes, and I study him too. <laughs> well, I, we got uh, about two minutes left in the program here. Is there anything oh, you want wow. to plug? Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I, I would love to plug a couple of things. Sapient Records. Uh, dot com. S a p i n i e n t. S a p as in Peter. Mm-hmm. I e n t. Records. Dot com. And my site uh, right now will lead you to my YouTube page and my Facebook page and maybe somewhere else. But I am also uh, going to be blogging uh, about mm-hmm. uh, herbal uh, stuff that I'm into and and beer brewing that I'm into, which fits very much into the swig. <laughs> so it will be beer iconoclast at Blogspot and herbal iconoclast at Blogspot, and that's a whole other rant that we can take up some other time. Um, mm-hmm. But otherwise, yeah, we are performing, and we have a new record. The Swigs have a new record, Pearl, P-U-R-L, uh, mm-hmm. with the title is a whole story in itself. And um, mm-hmm. Fish and I are working on new material. Uh, the new, latest one is a song called Zero Sum Game. 
and I'm hoping to get that out on a seven inch release with a with the swigs uh, fish carm on one side, swigs on the other side, which that mm-hmm. sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? I mean, yes, yes, that's it, fabulous. You know, the split single thing is is nice. So mm-hmm. yeah, those are those are um, my current plans, and and just mm-hmm. uh, playing playing here, and also planning to get. Uh, I really want to go to Texas. I want to do uh, oh. Austin and and San Antonio and Houston and the South. So uh, we need to talk about that uh, when yes, we get a we chance. Do. Yes, absolutely. Okay, everybody. Girl George, are you ready for our fi- our fi- our finale? Great of the talking program? to you, Kevin. Hey, yes. great talking to both of you, and thank you so much. Keep on yes, rocking. Absolutely. You guys absolutely. rock on yes. too. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, everybody. This is Gypsy Poet Radio. I am the Gypsy Poet, along with Girl George, and what a blast this afternoon having the one and only Kevin Henderson on the program. What a blast! Great stories, great fun, and please be sure to check him out on Facebook and also Fish Karma on YouTube. Don't forget the swigs, please. Absolutely awesome, awesome stuff. <laughs> I am signing off, saying adieu for now. Ciao. Adios.